Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. This is a recap to episode number 400 that recaps the episodes from 379 up through 398. First, thanks sponsors, Tops Panini and Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Huggins Scott Auctions, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, and Comsi.com, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. Try to take turns highlighting the sponsors, but they're all uh, worthy of your consideration. So I started off 379, that first episode of this 20 episode group was toward the end of the year with uh, a, a Zoom interview I had with Mike Fruitman to talk about uh, what we thought would happen in 2021. Mike's always enjoyable to talk to. He's really got the pulse of the hobby on the uh, LCS front and other. And then 379A was actually fil- uh, recorded later that same day prior to the release with Rob Veris. I really had a desire to get them both on at the same time. They're my two card shop sponsors, approach the hobby slightly differently, but they're both uh, world-class in their own way. I want to do more of these multi-guest episodes going forward, so you can be on the lookout for that, including the virtual hobby dinners I'm going to do are going to be more of a multi-guest uh, episodes that I'll carve them into. So I couldn't get Rob and Mike on together, so I did it one after the other, and, and it was still fun. 379B was the world record prices from Sports Cards Live and Jeremy Lee. It was timely, and I wanted to get it out. Like I said, very natural. Jeremy is an excellent interviewer. It was more him asking me, but we, we have a good back and forth. 380 was the other recap. 381 was Phil Necro, his passing. Rich and I record episodes every so often, and that had just happened. Rich is so versatile. And uh, Phil Necro, I had that experience with him at the Baseball Hall of Fame. So I knew him a little bit, but again, just a shocking year of losing all these great players in the last 12 months. 382 was 6162 Flair Basketball. Those were actually my personal memories. I don't know if many of you listen to back issues, but that's an episode that probably will stand the test of time. Just my recollections of what was going on in 61 and 62 in my preteen collecting experience. 383 outtakes on the future projections from Hobby Hotline. Hobby Hotline is a lot of fun. I'm on approximately once a month, highly recommended. The conversation really ranges. And so when I see a five or 10 minute or 15 minute discussion of something that I think is worthy of this audience, Again, you should listen to the whole uh, Hobby Hotline show. I do. <laughs> it's good. 384, John Newman, my buddy from the Sports Card Nation, had uh, personal, I'm trying to personalize the tributes, whether they're players or people that have been in the industry. And when it's a great person who was really good at what they did, like Floyd Little, great player. I was more of an NFC guy. Having uh, a chance to go back and forth with John Newman is always pleasurable. 384A were the outtakes with Jeff Wilson. I always get something out of uh, my conversations with Jeff. He's uh, coming at things uh, a little bit differently. The main criticism he gets is that he's trying to help you make money. And along the way, he's making money. I have no problem with that. It's a robust hobby. There'd be something wrong with the hobby if there weren't people coming in and trying to help you with uh, tools and uh, advice for how to uh, optimize the hobby. Now, I prefer to do my own research, but I think a lot of people are going to try to get advice from anybody they can get advice from. Jeff, I enjoyed our conversation. I've been on his show. He's been on mine. 384B, uh, another sports card live with Jeremy Lee. Again, pulling out retail, a little bit of a difference between Canada and the U.S. and PSA. Again, the PSA news is huge. They're not one of my sponsors, so I don't want to belabor that other than it's huge news. Even the offer has been improved from Nat Turner. 384C, not a shock that Tommy Lasorda passed away because he was older, but again, a larger than life personality that wasn't the greatest pitcher in the 50s, but he certainly was a huge personality within baseball. And I just want to apologize right now to the family and friends of Don Sutton. I think I dropped the ball there. Again, worthy of a tribute, but I had done the Dodger Blue with Tommy Lasorda and I was right in the middle of stuff. Don Sutton, very worthy of tribute. Like I said, there are no common players in baseball. They were amazing athletes up to that point. Don Sutton, if you were going to criticize longevity and sustained excellence just because he wasn't the best pl- pitcher in baseball, he's a worthy Hall of Famer. 385 was outtakes from the Hobby Hotline. When I don't put a topic there, it means there's more snippets. That that show really depends on who the co-hosts are and uh, what people are calling in about. So uh, you just have to listen to that and find out. It's a little bit of a surprise. 386 was Gail Sayers with Dave Slipka. We we also got into uh, Dick Butkus and, and the Bears. 
but uh, Gail Sayers, again, worthy of worthy of tribute. 3D7, the promo and preview cards with Lee Markowitz. Again, I just enjoy every once in a while having dealers on, as well as collectors, as well as advanced collectors, as well as new collectors, younger and older. Lee is following the road less traveled, going for things that are uh, quite tough and off the beaten track. 388 was me catching up with Pete Williams, the author of Card Sharks, a really uh, high quality uh, journalist who brought his journalistic uh, skill and interest into the hobby 30 years ago. And I can vaguely remember <laughs> talking to Pete, uh, whatever that would have been, 27 years ago about the book. And uh, again, a landmark book for our industry. 389 was my interview with Brody the Kid and getting Brody's origin story. It's interesting to have an origin story for somebody that's still only 12 and a half. But again, a really nice young man, and I wish him well. He's young enough to be my grandson. Brody, keep up the great work. That was an enjoyable time for me. 389A, the outtakes on promo and preview, cards with Lee. Sometimes I just keep the recorder going, and when there's some good stuff in there, I don't necessarily have to have a whole other episode, but I'm really committed to trying to stay under 15 minutes. And so if I had 20 minutes of good stuff with Lee, is that 14 and 6? I don't know. I'm just trying to give you content and package it in more bite-sized chunks. 3 to 9 b Bitcoin versus sports cards. I was very surprised that I didn't get more feedback on that uh, episode. I got tons of feedback from non-collectors and <laughs> friends who thought that was a really interesting take. But apparently, Bitcoin and sports cards are relatively mutually exclusive. That If you do one, you don't do the other because they both can take uh, as much money as you want to pour into it. And both have been fabulous investments over the last nine months. 390 was the outtakes on the big hobby stories. This was a very unusual episode of Sports Cards Live where Jeremy is interviewing me about the end of the year. That was very different because I think Jeremy is expert in weaving in the chat. And that was a very little chat involvement. It was mainly Jeremy and I going back and forth. I distilled it into some of the ones that I thought would be of interest. 391, the origin of Com C Berry. <laughs> I enjoyed being with Com C Berry. Com C, one of the sponsors. And I think when you have a, a strong brand, there's a strong team behind that brand. I can certainly say that was true of Beckett Publications. Seems to be very true of Com C as well. So thank you, Barry, for being on. 392, then and now, the hobby photographers with Ben Bram. Again, very unusual collecting interest, certainly the long tail, but Ben, um, we were able to walk through his interest in the unsung heroes of the hobby, some of these hobby photographers that took obscure photos and some of them too, turned into cards. 393, outtakes on the Gretzky 10s with on the hobby hotline. Jeremy and I, one of the things I enjoy, and this is another insight about our company, if Jeremy and I were completely on the same page, it, it wouldn't be as interesting. <laughs> I don't like yes people. So Jeremy pushes back. We, we're largely in agreement, but not completely in agreement. And those are the people I really enjoy talking to, people that have some level of disagreement and they can articulate it. And certainly in our company, those were people that, that did well if they were able to defend their position, which Jeremy did did quite well. 394 was the then and now about USA Today with Pete and I did a, a couple episodes. USA Today was a big deal. And I think I probably have underestimated the strategic importance in its contribution to the success of our monthly magazines. Baseball Weekly, which was uh, more what Pete worked on back in the 90s, not quite as much because I think in 84, starting the baseball magazine, the positioning of USA Today was very important. 394A was the shocking tribute to Hank Aaron, Hammer and Hank, Henry Lewis Aaron. When you're 86, you don't know, but I, I just didn't realize that. Again, I, I don't want to disrespect Hank Aaron. I think he was a great man and a great, great slugger. And as I said, my Com C sales, uh, anything Hank Aaron got snapped up. A few people made offers, and I think I'll, I'll do an episode on the etiquette of responding to offers in those kind of situations and do that in the future. If you've got feedback on that, any feedback you have on any of these episodes, you can just send it to me at drjamesbeckett at gmail.com and mm -hmm. I'll take it under advisement. Uh, 394B was the invitation that kind of laid out, I'm going to do a multi-guest episodes. I'll carve some of them, but the episodes, I've got some great questions lined up. It is not first come, first serve, so I'm not full, but... If, if it does get full, which it will fill, if you don't qualify, you're still going to be on the list for future consideration. So it's not a waste of time if you uh, listen to that episode and say, hey, that sounds interesting. I'm more interested in vintage or modern. Let me know. You got to email me and let me know what you've done and what your interests are. The other thing I just want to say, I'm, I'd like to get a binger 
somebody that has binged some of the episodes, because I'd like to get a, an assortment of collectors and dealers and, and different perspectives in those virtual dinners. 395 was the tributes to uh, Michael Ella and Ernie Montella, two really great guys from the Philadelphia area. They've passed away now. They were corporate types in their 40-hour week uh, jobs, very personable and really love the hobby. Each came out a different way and always fun to do it with uh, Rich Klein, who knew them at least as well as I did, perhaps even better. 396 was the origin story of Charles Hodder, the ID guy from ComC. And uh, again, Rich had warned me that Charles had a very interesting and eclectic background, and, and Rich was correct, as he almost always is. And it made me want to send some more cards to ComC, that even the obscure stuff that I have, Charles delights in that and enjoys expanding his knowledge. Uh, 397 were the outs, outtakes on consulting, my consulting bent, the FOMO, the fear of missing out, and grading. Again, just a little bit of a catch-all, a few minutes on each one from Sports Cards Live with Jeremy. FOMO's real. Fear of being embarrassed is a bigger deal to me than fear of missing out. I, I, I want to miss out if something's a bad deal. You've got to be able to figure out whether something's an enduring good deal or whether it's a temporary good deal because some things you don't get a second chance and some things you do. 398 was the Todd Helton episode with Terry Wickstrom. Enjoyed uh, visiting with Terry. We'll see about Todd Helton. We just have had the news just recently that there's nobody going to go in the Hall of Fame this year, that Kurt Schilling came close. I don't know if I call that troubling. I, I think most old timers feel like there's some people in the Hall of Fame that are not as worthy of others. That's always going to be the case. So for the voters to have some restraint that not forcing somebody to be in, and yet I think there's some people on the list that, that didn't get enough votes this year that'll, that'll eventually get in, and we'll see about that. So I'll address that further in another episode. But in the meantime, Todd Helton is Terry's guy, and I'd vote for Todd Helton as well. I think he was uh, awesome for some period of uh, six, seven years. So that's it for the brief recap of the last uh, 20 or so episodes. Again, send if you're interested in the hobby dinners uh, on February 15th and 16th. It's not first come, first serve, but <laughs> those events will be held on those days. So if you're listening to this after that, then I'm sorry about that. But if it's a great new tradition, we'll do it again. So thanks, everybody. Be back again uh, tomorrow with another episode. The man in the house.